let's have a look at our analysis of when we do a dot plot of the difference. So we've remember how when I set up the data and I said we needed one column with say the dominant hand, one column with the non-dominant hand, and one column with the difference. That's the part that we want to analyze now, okay? So we want to compare before and after or one hand with another hand. So we want to look at how much it's changed by. So for example, I've got a value here, say that that value there is at three, and the arrow goes down to a point here, which is at five. That means that's a difference of two, okay? I do the, big, the bottom number minus the top number. That gets me a difference of two. If, however, the, the graph was going, say, in a different direction, so say I look at this point here, of 13 and that's got an arrow going down to a point here of 12. 12 take away 13 gives me a difference of negative 1. So arrows going in that direction will give you a positive value. Arrows going in that direction will give you a negative value. Okay, So we're looking at that difference, how much is it changed by. Let's have a look at an example now. So this is a dot plot of the difference, okay? And notice how in brackets I've been quite explicit. It's the non-dominant hand minus the dominant hand, all right? So I need to know which way round they go. So if I was to take an example, so say I had a person who with their non-dominant hand took 30 seconds to write the passage. Then I had a person with their dominant hand um, that, took, oh, that took 20 seconds to write that passage. I'm going to subtract the two, 30 take away 20, that's going to give me a value of 10. So then I'd go to my dot plot here and I would draw a dot at 10 to represent the difference for that student. And that's what we do with every single student. We choose another student, look at their time for each, the dominant and non-dominant, subtract them, and then each dot on here, so each of these dots represents the difference, how much longer they take to write with their non-dominant hand compared to their dominant. Okay. So that's our first step, is to know that each dot represents a single student and how much longer or shorter they take to write that passage. Now I need to notice um, any patterns that I see. Okay, So one thing I notice is that all of the values, so here's 10, um, there's 160, and 0 is just down here. All of the values on this graph are positive, okay? All of those numbers are positive numbers. And so that connects with my arrow graph where all the arrows were going in one direction. So because all the values are positive, that means that this non-dominant hand is bigger than my dominant hand. And how I can work that out is it like the example I've just done above, non-dominant is 30 minus dominant is 20, that gives you a positive number. If it was the other way around, if I had my non-dominant minus the dominant, say the dominant hand took longer. So maybe that was 50 seconds and the non-dominant hand was 30 seconds. So if I did 30 take away 50, that would give me a negative 20. So in terms of my graph, I would be drawing a graph down here going down to negative 20 and I'd have a dot down there at negative 20. The third type of scenario is what if they were the same time? So what if the time I took to write with my non-dominant and dominant were the same? Well 20 take away 20, that would give you a value of 0. So in that case at 0 I would be putting in a dot there to represent they are the same times. Okay.